Good evening, my fellow spook hunters. Can I call you all spook hunters? I can call you spook hunters, can't I? What you are looking at behind me here is the gates of the infamous Highgate Cemetery. And here's the chapel that's attached to it. And there are many, many, many famous people buried here. Karl Marx being the most famous, but apparently Malcolm McLaren's buried here too. But that would probably be over there on the other side of the road which is the modern part anyway i brought you here as part of my spook hunt um to tell you some stories so what i'm going to tell you about is the highgate vampire so in 1970 there was a book written called the highgate vampire by a guy called sean manchester and it sparked massive massive um visits group visits by people who decided they were going to come track down the Highgate vampire and stake him and they took over the cemetery I think it was the 13th of March 1970 they stormed the cemetery to try and track down and stake the Highgate vampire but surprise surprise they failed um, although it is claimed that he was then tracked down to a gothic mansion in Crouch End in 1973 and put to his death by the stake anyway um, Highgate Highgate and Highgate cemetery has to be one of the spookiest places in North London. Um, did you know that in um, Dracula, Lucy used to roam across Hampstead Heath? And uh, we have many other spooky tales from Highgate and this area that I will fill you in on very shortly. I'm going on a little wander. Um, but yeah, apart from Highgate Vampire, we also have a story of somebody who regularly apparently crosses this very street which is starting to look very spooky now, it's getting dark, isn't it? And uh, he apparently turns around occasionally and says, good evening, sir, and then vanishes through the gates over there. Ooh. So that's the start of this evening's Highgate stories from the absolutely incredible Highgate Cemetery and Highgate Cemetery Chapel. And it's getting towards dusk, which is a good time for spooky stories. So I'll be back soon. Oh, I just thought a little add-on here that I should mention that this cemetery was actually used in uh, Hammer Horror's Taste the Blood of Dracula, which was filmed here in 1970. There we go, that concludes Highgate Cemetery for now. Unless I find this man crossing the road in his long tailcoat with his black hat and he turns around and says, Good evening, sir, to me. Well, just wait a minute. If any of you spot him on this video, do let me know, won't you? <laughs> Oh my word, check out this house. Check out this house. It's right next to Highgate Cemetery. Can you imagine living in there? How amazing would that be? I'm so jealous. Jesus, can you hear that? What the hell is going on in there? Anyway, I'm still hanging around outside Highgate Cemetery. I've got no... Oh, it stopped. No, nope, it started again. Okay, that's kind of weird. Anyway, I'm still hanging around outside Highgate Cemetery here because there's one really important thing I forgot to tell you. Jesus, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Something's disturbing those birds. What could it be? Anyway, the thing I wanted to tell you about is it may well be an urban myth, I don't know, um, but I was always told that Bram Stoker got his um, idea for Dracula from Highgate Cemetery. And the story that I was told years ago was that he was strolling through the cemetery one evening, as the Victorians used to do, because um, they kind of viewed death differently. They kind of came and had picnics at the graves and things like that. It wasn't a kind of a mournful thing. It was a kind of a celebration of life. Anyway, he was wandering through the cemetery one evening, here, behind me, Ooh. and there used to be all these family crypts that had glass-domed roofs. 
and he walked past one and saw a shadowy figure moving around by a coffin inside this um, family vault and it completely freaked him and gave him the idea behind this dark shadowy figure but the truth of the matter is there was supposed to be a burial the next day and all it was was somebody who was in there dusting and tidying up and putting the body in a coffin on the table so there was nothing sinister about it at all but I was always told that that was one of the things behind Dracula now if anyone knows different do tell me anyway I've been hanging around here hoping I'm going to see this guy cross the road and he's going to say good evening sir to me but I don't think it's going to happen so um, I'm going to head off to my next spooky location which is Pond Square and the ghost chicken yeah you heard that right the ghost chicken <laughs> Hello again, Spook fans. So, Shaun of the Dead again. Yeah, I know you can't see me very well, but the important thing is what's behind me over there. For this is Hillcrest, and Hillcrest was the flat that Shaun was living in when um, they were all holed up, thinking they were going to stay there and avoid the zombies in Shaun of the Dead. And there's several blocks around here. I'm not sure exactly which one it was, but this was where, um, I think it was Sean's girlfriend, wasn't it? And he was staying at her place with her mates. And uh, they were holed up in these flats right here in Hillcrest in Highgate. So there we go. Another Sean of the Dead fact for you. If you look at my other vlog in Crouch End, you'll see other stuff from Sean of the Dead. But yeah, this is where they were. Hillcrest in Highgate. Okay, I'm off to Pond Square to find the elusive uh, ghost chicken. Oh yeah, one more thing. Before I leave Hillcrest, I just found out another spooky thing. That apparently, in the 1970s, in these blocks of flats, Hillcrest, from Shaun of the Dead, um, there was a shadowy figure that was frequently spotted moving from building to building, and he used to appear in people's houses, and that time there would be a significant drop in temperature. Hello again, dear viewers. Now, it's got incredibly dark and spooky here. Oh, check out that lamp. That's cool. Anyway, where we are now is Pond Square. And Pond Square is apparently the scene of the ghost chicken. Now, this creature was apparently sighted frequently in the 1940s, 60s and 70s. And the story goes that Sir Francis Bacon who was a very famous 17th century writer, politician and philosopher, used to like to dabble in science. And it was a cold January day in 1626 when he found himself a chicken, slaughtered it, and then got handfuls of snow and stuffed it inside, thinking this will preserve meat. So obviously he was quite right, but um, the evil chicken murdering git then subsequently caught a chill and died. So that kind of serves him right for murdering the chicken. But he was actually right because, you know, that's probably the basis of Iceland these days and any number of other freezer places for um, chickens and other assorted poultry. And, ooh, look, there's a car going past. That's good. Anyway, so um, ever since then, there is apparently a ghost chicken that runs around this square flapping its wings but the good news is it hasn't really been sighted here since the 1970s so we're hoping that it's uh, gone to rest in that great freezer in the sky but there we are pond square highgate village the scene of the ghost chicken and no i haven't seen it unfortunately okay thus concludes the ghost chicken story and the spookiness for this evening i'll be back with more I just have to add something in. Behind me right here, you probably can't see it, I'll just about see it, at the gates to the park that is the cut through from Highgate Cemetery back to um, Highgate Village. And I was just about to walk in and they were closing up for the night and the guy said the strangest thing. He said to me, did you want to get to the other side? 